Welcome back to AAT Systems video series. Today we're talking about clogged Zerg fittings and, and what the correct remedy is for fixing a Zerg fitting that doesn't take grease. So before we get into that, we should really understand what clogs or stops a Zerg fitting from working. And typically it's gonna be old grease. Maybe the grease is oxidized or it's very old and the additives of it kind of fell out and maybe they hardened over time and now you're not able to force grease through that zerk fitting into that pin bushing or bearing. That's probably the most common. Um, another situation that can occur is rust. So in areas where you have a lot of moisture, rolled salt, and different um, things like that that can speed up the oxidation process, um, the zerk fitting itself can rust and, and seize tight. And in that case, maybe, maybe grease can't go into that fitting or sometimes they're, they're rusted open where you pump grease in and you look back and it's actually pumping back out of that zerk fitting because the little ball on the zerk head is not, is not closing and keeping that lubricant inside the bearing. Um, so that's possible. It's also possible that maybe you had greases, used two separate greases that weren't compatible and the additives inside fell out or maybe reacted and had a hardening effect on one another. Um, so that's another possibility. If that's the case, you're probably gonna have to look at, you know, cleaning that bearing out or forcing, you know, any of that existing grease out. And typically we would recommend just replacing that bearing if you have a very intense grease hardening situation. And the final option is kind of that the Zerk fitting got damaged. Maybe it's exposed, it got hit, um, could have been affected by uh, a damaged, grease coupler that happens from time to time. Um, so there's a number of different things that can stop a Zerk fitting from working. So what do you do when you have a Zerk fitting that's clogged? We, uh, we turn to the internet to find out what recommendations are out there and see how they aligned with what we'd recommend as an industrial company. Um, and to be honest, it was pretty interesting. So I'll just go through the list of them that we have here. Um, and, and kind of talk about why we don't recommend them. And then at the end, I'll give you the, the solution that we recommend. Um, so internet fixes, up number one, uh, heat the Zerk fitting up with a hair dryer and try to force grease through it as the Zerk fitting is warm. Um, so kind of a sound idea. Um, you're thinking that the grease in there is hard and if you heat it up, you're gonna be able to get that grease more fluid and it's gonna wanna move past there. Um, the reasoning of sound, the practicality of it is not, is not so great um, because if we have hardened grease inside of that Zerk fitting, we really don't wanna force it into that bearing um, because once that hardened grease gets in that bearing, it's not coming out, it's gonna increase friction, it might cause damage. Um, so it's not something we recommend. Um, spraying penetrating oil in the Zerk fitting was probably the second most common one that we found. Uh, again, practicality, okay, the, the logic is there that you wanna break up or dissolve any grease that might be clogging the Zerk fitting, but the problem becomes introducing penetrating oil inside of a bearing. Penetrating oil is designed to break down sludge, build up, um, remove rust, and a lot of times it has a very high level of detergent in it, which can adversely affect or really negatively affect um, fluid filming layers. So if you put a, a heavy detergent into a, a bearing, you might prevent the grease in that bearing from really forming a great lubrication film, or you might prevent it from forming a lubrication film at all. And, and we've done a number of videos showing this. Um, one of the great ones is with engine cleaner. A lot of engine cleaners are just 100% a detergent. And when you have them in your engine, they strip out that lubrication film and they actually open up a short time for increased amount of damage. Um, on those running surfaces because there's not a lubrication film or lubricant film. So with engine cleaners, you know, you gotta look for, and we have a bit, like I said, we've got a great video out there that shows this. You gotta look for a, an engine cleaner that has a lubricity factor in it so that as the engine's being cleaned or as the bearing's being cleaned, it is stabilizing a lubrication film on those wear surfaces and protecting it. So spraying penetrating oil in a, in a pin bearing bushing or in a Zerk fitting is not something we recommend because there's no way to know how it's gonna affect the grease that's in there or how it's gonna affect the lubrication film that's in there. And a lot of people will tell you, well, it's not a lot of penetrating oil, so what, what damage can it do? 
And the reality is why take the risk? Um, even, even a couple drops of penetrating oil in a small bearing like this one um, has the potential to, to really strip off a lot of the lubrication film providing protection in that bearing. Uh, another one we ran across a lot on the internet was using high pressure air to blast through the Zerk fitting. Um, problem there is every bearing has a seal. So when you blast a lot of air into that bearing, most likely you're gonna blow out the seal. We have a seal here. And when you blow this out, what happens? Well, let's first discuss what a seal is for. A seal keeps the external environment outside of the bearing. So on the inside, you have the grease, the bearing itself, and, and the lubricant is held in by the seal. And the external environment, the dust, the grime, everything else is held out by the seal. So when we introduce a, a high volume of air, or high pressure of air, we can actually destroy this um, seal. And in doing so, you can actually allow for further damage. So maybe dirt or, or dust is coming into that bearing or maybe the lubricant itself is leaking out. So again, that's a situation where we'd just rather not get ourselves into. Um, high pressure air in a Zerk fitting, typically not good. Um, and the last and probably most common suggestion we found on the internet was using some type of hydraulic tool um, that clips onto a Zerk fitting with a standard grease coupler or something that, like that and uses uh, basically hydraulic pressure to force penetrating oil into the Zerk fitting. So it's typically a long cylinder and, and you pull out this piston and you fill it full of penetrating oil, you put this, the piston back in and you hit on top of that piston and what it's supposed to do is drive penetrating oil into that Zerk fitting and clear up the clog and allow you to, to, to grease without removing the Zerk fitting. So there's two issues there. One, you're introducing penetrating oil that has the potential to strip lubrication filming inside of that bearing pin or bushing. The second issue is you're taking whatever's clogging that Zerk fitting and you're pushing it further into the bearing. And you know, it's a point that a lot of people don't get, but think of it this way. The reason we have fuel filters is to prevent any garbage that's in your fuel tank from getting in to the combustion chamber of the engine or your injection pump or anything like that. A Zerk fitting is a very simple way of doing the same thing. So if the Zerk fitting's clogged, we don't want to try and blast what's ever in there into that bearing because once that, that hardened grease or that debris or maybe even part of that Zerk fitting is into that bearing, you can't get it out without removing the bearing. And a lot of times hardened grease can cause increases in friction, increases in running temperature. It might clog some of the, the lubrication ways inside of that bearing and prevent grease from getting to certain sections of that bearing interface or some of the contacting surfaces, and, and that can really increase wear. So the recommendation that we have in the industrial world um, is, is very simple. Remove the Zerk fitting, inspect it, see what the issue is, and replace the Zerk fitting. So Zerk fittings are remarkably easy to change. Um, it was kind of surprising to us that other than a couple industrial companies, there was not one do-it-yourself recommendation just to take out the Zerk fitting and remove it because it's actually simpler than a lot of the processes described and it's, it's certainly cheaper. A pack of five Zerk fittings is maybe $2. So it doesn't hurt to have some on hand. Zerk fittings do get uh, you know, bumped or damaged from time to time. It's, it's a great thing to have on hand that you can replace it you know, as it's damaged or as needs replacing. So to remove, to remove a Zerk fitting, all you're going to need is a, is a socket, small socket. They don't take a lot of pressure. And um, so if you have a, a metric Zerk fitting, typically they're 7 millimeter or 10 millimeter. Um, so you just need a, a socket, go on there, ratchet that out, put, inspect it, put the new Zerk fitting in, um, and just run it up snug, tight. Um, don't over tighten it. You don't want to strip that out. And... If it's a standard size Zerk fitting, so a US Zerk fitting, typically they're gonna be 930 seconds. Um, for a, a socket size, which, which sounds uncommon, it's not. It, it's fairly common, especially with uh, different styles of smaller set hex heads. Um, 
and, and the larger size would be 7 16 uh, in some cases you do have a 5 16 as well um, and all you do is you simply remove that zerk fitting put the new one in and the problem is solved it's cheap it's the correct way into doing it it allows you to see what's actually going on so is that zerk fitting damaged is there something plugging up that zerk fitting you know what's really going on it could be that the bearings damaged and the grease isn't able to go in. In that case, you know what's wrong, you can replace that bearing. So the only other recommendation um, that we would have is just keep Zerk fittings clean. A lot of damage can be prevented if you keep Zerk fittings clean. You know, wipe them off when you're done with them. Wipe them off before greasing. That prevents pushing any dirt, debris, or dust into that Zerk fitting that could cause issues for you down the road. So Really, it's just a, a very common sense approach. You know, don't overcomplicate it. Replace that Zerg fitting. Inspect what's going on. That gives you the two most important things. It gives you the knowledge of what caused the problem, and it gives you the solution. Um, so that's what we always recommend. It's it's very very effective, and it's very easy on your your uh, wallet too. It does not cost a lot to do. So I hope you found this informative. Leave comments down below, and we'll keep answering these questions. It's very interesting to us coming from an industrial side, you know, what applications and what solutions we have compared to what's out there on the internet. And, you know, again, the goal for us is just to help you get educated and really understand, you know, everything there is about, about greasing, zerk fittings, grease guns, lubrication in general, and make sure that your equipment lasts a lifetime. So thanks again for tuning in. Uh, don't be afraid to hit subscribe and check out some of our other videos.